Hello and welcome to the Gold and Silver Club end of week review for the 22nd of November 2013, presented by myself, Phil Carr and Nick Kelsey at the Gold and Silver Club. Today, we will be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets and analysing the week's performance. This live session today will cover an end of week summary for gold, silver, oil, natural gas and the commodity currencies. We shall be looking at the top trades of the week, covering live market commentary and technical analysis and also looking at the week ahead. So key events looking forward into next week and today too. So this week has been a very interesting week again for the gold and silver markets. Lots of uh, opportunities and uh, lots of, uh, of volatility to take advantage of. So we'll talk you through exactly what has occurred. Gold prices have essentially this week fallen to four and a half month lows as Fed tapering is likely in the coming month. So gold prices fell to a four, month, four and a half month low just on Wednesday as the US Federal Reserve FOMC minutes highlighted several members of the committee said at their October meeting that they could see the Fed tapering its $85 billion a month bond buying program at one of its next few meetings. The FOMC minutes put the potential for December tapering back on the table, which presented commodity traders with highly lucrative opportunities to sell short gold, silver, copper and the commodity currencies, whilst the US dollar index rallied to hit highs on the news. So we'll show you that very shortly on the charts too. The uh, FOMC committee members also highlighted specific scenarios in the minutes under which conditions they would begin tapering sooner rather than later. So the U.S. economic recovery being one of those. The minutes suggest the recovery is continuing at a moderate pace with further improvement in the labor market. And before the minutes were released, there was an 80 percent chance that tapering would occur in January or March. And those odds remain the same, especially if non-farm payroll data during the next two weeks, comes out below market forecasts. And that now puts U.S. employment data high on our traders' watch list. So looking ahead to next month, based on the moves we saw this week on the U.S. dollar and the commodities, uh, the December non-farm payroll report and the final FOMC meeting scheduled December 17th to 18th are guaranteed uh, to be big movers moving into December now. Before we start and go through some technical analysis and have a look at the charts at the moment, there's already quite a lot of activity that we can take a look at right now. Uh, I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer and speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Golden Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the most lucrative financial markets in the world. So gold, silver, oil, natural gas and the commodity currencies. I've also trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders and successfully manage their own investment portfolio. And I'm responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a proven track record of generating returns for traders. Also a regular contributor to a number of financial publications and speak at numerous trading seminars, webinars and workshops. Uh, Joining me in running the Gold and Silver Club is Nick Kelsey, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Golden Silver Club, Nick spent over five years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. Through his first-hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, discovered the formula, the mindset and tools that give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy, and also regularly writes for a number of global business and financial publications, and we've appeared frequently on financial television. So, guys, that's just a little bit about the Gold and Silver Club. So, if you want to now turn your eye to the gold price... Gold is currently trading at $1,241 an ounce. So we've had quite a fall uh, since this time last week, over 300 uh, point fall to the downside. And we've got some very interesting levels um, we're dancing with right now. Some key Fibonacci levels actually where 
very much a bent area. So we're going to see if we're going to hold from here or if gold is going to break these key levels. We've potentially got a long way down and some uh, big shorting opportunities on the way. So we'll definitely talk you through that. In terms of gold seasonality, where we are at at the moment, well, we're coming into an in, uh, interesting time of year. Typically, we do tend to see a bottom occur around about mid to uh, the second to last week of, uh, of November. So we are expecting, we were expecting um, a bottom to be put in the market uh, around about now, actually. So we're going to see whether we are going to break through this key $1,241 an ounce level and come uh, down to around about the 1200s here or potentially 1180 or whether we are going to find support at the moment and start to rally into Thanksgiving next week. So Thanksgiving is uh, in America. It's going to be next Thursday. Uh, then we have Black Friday when all the sales occur in America and then Cyber Monday. So uh, there are a lot of activities which do provide support across the markets towards the end of next week, which we'll be looking out for. And then, of course, uh, we have the beginning of the Santa Rally. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more about the Santa Rally, um, you can find out more about that uh, just via our, uh, our website. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure you get a recording of a webinar that we've done on that. So some very interesting moves coming into the end of the year. We're in, we've got one more week left um, for November. There still are going to be a lot of trading opportunities to finish the year. Um, strong for everybody here. The markets aren't going to slow down just yet. So um, that's what we're looking at right now. In terms of the U.S. dollar index, well, the U.S. dollar index inversely correlates to gold. You can see gold going down. U.S. dollar index has been spiking up to the upside. So we will take a look at the U.S. dollar index. If the U.S. dollar index um, remains strong here and we see a surge to the upside, that's going to cause a breakdown in gold. And we're going to see some lower uh, moves heading into, uh, into next week. However, if we see the U.S. dollar index and this morning it is selling off a bit, if the U.S. dollar index uh, sells off from here. We're just consolidating at the moment. We, we, we need to really come to a, um, a breakdown or a break to the upside or downside at the moment for further direction on gold. We'll show you that on the charts, but whilst they're both consolidating, we're going to just keep on moving sideways. If we get a breakdown in the US dollar index, that's going to be supported for gold. So definitely for those gold traders, you want to be watching the US dollar index because it's uh, inversely correlated and that's going to give further direction to gold moving into today, later on today, and next week too. Looking at the uh, top trades of the week, so we've had a lot of trading opportunities this week at the Gold and Silver Club. We've been running our international traders uh, competition at the Gold and Silver Club, and the amount of setups which have been posted is phenomenal. So we have been just seeing a lot of activity um, on the markets, L lots to profit from at the moment. We hope you, you guys are catching some of these moves as well uh, because there's just been a lot of setup. So, uh, first of all, uh, we go through some of the top trades of the week. There have been a lot, so we just tried to pick out the uh, the best one for you guys. Um, first of all, WTI Oil that triggered earlier on this week on the daily. That was just very simple sell entry at 94.30. Uh, came down, hit our level of support. It was at key Fibonacci level, gave us the right signal to sell short. A uh, 60 point risk on that for 97 point profit for a 1.5 to one risk to reward. Very quick day trade. Natural gas uh, provided us with a really nice move uh, midweek this week. We found support at a, a key trend line, and uh, we had a very good risk to reward on this. The risk on the, the trade was 21 pips uh, or 21 base points, and the reward here was 86 points. So uh, for each lot traded, $210 risk for $860 for a 4 to 1 on natural gas. Then we broke out even further on the natural gas inventory this week. Uh, Australian US dollar has been great. It's still continuing to break down now. It's just the uh, same situation as gold. So this has presented some really, we've got two positions we've taken on this. We're still running uh, the other position. So I'll give you the stats on that next week. The first position we took there right at the top was a sell entry at 0 0.9405. Uh, the risk was 42 points and we've uh, come down for 146 profit to a key Fibonacci level. We've now broken through that level and we continue to move to the downside here on Australian US dollar. And New Zealand US dollar is breaking down this morning. So we'll take a look at that correlation too. Gold, so gold, some beautiful moves uh, this week, just breaks of consolidation, breaks of Fibonacci levels. Uh, it came down to our profit target on the uh, FOMC on the minutes reduced on Wednesday, which was great. That FOMC meeting was just uh, great for, uh, for gold for the gold shorts, it was a very predictable move. So we had a sell entry at 12.67 on a break of a consolidation. 
and we came out at 12.40 major Fibonacci level for 270 points. We're still um, consolidating in that Fibonacci at the moment, so we're going to be looking at some potential um, sells, uh, some setups there. The risk on that trade was 90 points, so $900 for each lot traded for 270 points, so 2,700 um, US dollars profit per lot traded for a 3 to 1 uh, for our gold sell short. And silver, we also had another break in consolidation, so same situation, uh, opportunity to short from 2029 down to 1982. And silver still hovering around 1982, it's at 1985 right now, it's just consolidating. So everything waiting for further direction. So we like this um, when we're at event areas on the markets, because it means the, further, the longer it waits in these consolidation zones, the more likely it is that once we break, we're going to get a, a big move. So those are our top trades of the week. We hope you benefited as well. We've got plenty more to show you on the markets this morning. So with that, I'm going to move across to my live charts and we will take a look. So Friday, Friday is just generally very busy um, for the market. So there's always lots of opportunities on Friday. So we're going to be taking a look at the markets. Uh, let's just go over to my screen too. Okay, so first market we're going to have a look at is Australian US dollar. Australian US dollar has, uh, I'll show you on the four hour because it's probably a bit clearer here. And we will just uh, remove some of these horizontal lines, give you the the full picture. Okay, so Australian US dollar, you can see here, uh, we've had some fantastic trade opportunities. We've been selling short from the break up here of this consolidation. We've had additional positions, even on, this is the FOMC um, set up that we had here and let me just show you that depending on where you had your, your stop loss on that if you had a tighter stop we had a couple of positions on here we've, we've hit over we continue to sell short this position so we've got over a 6 to 1 um, at the moment from a, the stop in 50% of a inverse candle set up at a break of Fibonacci there so we've got a, a really nice risk to reward we're just going to keep running this at the moment with Australian US dollar it's not really got too much of an end in sight until it gets to 0. 0.9, um, 0. 0.0612. You can see we also had a, uh, a trade up here on this break of consolidation. This was the one pointed out just on one of the top trades of the week here. And you can see this uh, trade came down, hit our profit target just below as well for roughly a 4 to 1 down there at the Fibonacci level at 0. 0.925. So uh, it looks like it's got a lot further to run at the moment, Australian US dollar hasn't really got a lot of support till the next Fibonacci level down. Uh, you've got another inverse hammer which appeared here on the four hour and we just continue to be bearish. If I go out to the daily chart, I will we'll show you that as well. So looking at the daily chart for Australian US dollar, you can see here uh, no support until 0 0.90616. It's had uh, all the key moving averages are now pointing lower. It's just broken through another Fibonacci level this morning. Uh, so I would say what we're looking at here, unless we get any, let's just look at the, we'll go over the major news today. We've not got too much. Just see the top right hand corner. We've got, uh, CAD, CPI, CAD retail sales. It's not going to affect us too much. FOMC member George speaks. That's going to be at about another two and a half hours. So we've got plenty of time for this, uh, to continue to fall. So this is what I'm looking at. Australian US dollar. This move. Okay. And then we're going to see how the market reacts once it gets to 0 0.90616. If it gets there, but it does, there's very little to, to really support this market right now. So uh, Australian US dollar, that's what we're doing with Australian US dollar right now. Uh, New Zealand US dollar, same situation. It broke through major uh, FIB level today. We've actually through the 200-day moving average. Um, inverse hammer on the daily and the four-hour gave us more, you know, more signals as well this morning. You can see... Uh, for those of you who trade like trade candlestick setups, we've got a nice inverse hammer here, break with Fibonacci. Um, so we're going to come down, I would say, um, here on New Zealand US dollar two. Both markets are uh, very strongly correlated, Australian US dollar and New Zealand US dollar. So uh, both of those look like we're going to see a continuation. We'll just show you that very quickly, the, the correlation. Okay, so here we have um, on the candlestick chart here, this is Australian US dollar. The black lines is New Zealand US dollar. So tremendously well correlated. So um, if we, with both of them are triggering short at the moment. So um, the correlation is very strong between these two markets. So 
Uh, both look uh, like they've got a lot further to go at the moment, just today on Friday. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. And on New Zealand US dollar, the next Fibonacci level is down here at 0.810. So this is what we're looking at right now. This sort of a move, just continuation to come down. We're below all key moving averages, probably into next week. We could see further downside. Depends on the US dollar index too. I'll bring up the US dollar index so we can take a look at that as well. So here is the, the US dollar index. So the US dollar index this morning, finding a little bit of support. We'll just put it on the four hour. Um, getting a little bit of support there on the four hour. You can see it's consolidating. It's been on the rise uh, over the last week or so. Um, we are, let's just have a look at key resistance. We did find key resistance at 81.50. We're around about finding support at 80. Uh, 87 at the moment. Uh, we'll see if we get a rally to the upside here on the US dollar index today. That's going to be bearish uh, for gold. I will show you that as well. Okay, so this is gold, the black line. So if we see uh, US, dollar, US dollar index continue to rally here, uh, we'll continue to see gold break down. So this is the inverse correlation that we have with these markets. So um, this is what we're looking out for today. If we get a continuation of a rally, we'll be looking to sell short gold further as it breaks key levels. Or if uh, the US dollar index does sell off here, that will be supportive for gold. So that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on. But new, certainly commodity currencies are weak this morning. Uh, moving across to gold, uh, in the size of candle yesterday, we've got a uh, doji on the daily time frame, all key moving averages pointing to lower prices. You know, you've got very clear trend lines on this market as well, downward trending channels. Um, we're way below key moving averages and where we're at at the moment. If you go out to uh, the weekly, the weekly is looking very bearish here uh, at the moment on the weekly time frame with, uh, with this big inverse hammer, big, very much a sell candle here. Uh, on the weekly. We're finishing almost at the weekly lows, which doesn't bode well for next week for gold. So I think we could see some further prices before we get a rally into the end of November. So we'll see if we get that break today of the 12.39 and we have confirmation. So I'm just going to be monitoring that on the four hour as well. So we've got essentially a consolidation at the moment on this market. This is a consolidation. We want to see which way we're going to break. So if we're going to break above 12.51, here to the upside, or if we're going to break below 12.36 and then just have a bit of a bloodbath on gold and come down to uh, first level would be 12.26 where we could see some support, um, but really below that, there's nothing to really stop um, gold com from coming down to the 1200s and 11.80 level. There's not hardly any support there for gold. So that's what we'd definitely be monitoring as well. Silver, similar situation. Um, it's, a, it's found support at a key Fibonacci level as well, 19.82, below all of its key moving averages, broke down this week. If we do break lower here, uh, there is a little bit of support about around about these uh, key levels here, which takes us to around 19, the 19 level. But if we break through 19 here, um, we, we're going to quite easily, I would imagine, come down to 18, 19. So we've got about a one and a half dollar drop here, 140. 50 point drop here and then if we do do that we're going to start seeing um three year lows here on silver if we break through 18.19 uh, we're going to start seeing really there's not much support into about 16 dollars so we could get uh we could see silver really build pick up momentum to the downside here so uh i would look at that very closely weekly silver's looking really bearish as well uh so we're we are more bearish the only thing to, to just be wary of is seasonality this time of year moving into the end of November. We normally do see seasonality-wise a pickup in the prices um, of, uh, of gold moving into the first couple of weeks of December. But we might just get a, uh, a very sh short and sharp move to the downside, of quick opportunities to sell short before we start seeing um, some pending orders on the buy side come in there and we see a bottom of the market. We'll be seeing, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. But technically speaking, if you didn't account for seasonality, we're looking very weak. Gold, silver, Australian US dollar, New Zealand US dollar. Uh, we're looking very weak for certainly today anyway. Uh, let's look at WTI and Brent. The Brent broke out yesterday. This is something we've been uh, looking at for a long time. We'll post this on our top trades next week. We're still in a position here, so we haven't closed yet. Um, we got a breakout above 108.43 bib level, broke out of a downward trending channel. All moving averages were now above. Broke out the 50-day here as well, and we look set like we're coming up to 111, really, would be the next key level here. 
Uh, we could see this. We get a hammer on the daily. Looks very uh, much on the bullish side for oil at the moment. So we'll be keeping an eye on that to see if we're going to hit our profit target 111.24. Uh, so Brent looking was looking good on the weekly as well. Now WTI is a bit. It, it's uh, it's got a bit of work to do here. But it just found resistance again at the weekly resistance at just below 95.75. So you go out to the weekly, you've got a, a strong consolidation. We've got a very strong trend line here on the weekly for WTI. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We've got one, two, three on the weekly, three hammers. So we're just waiting for a breakout now. Uh, so the weekly is looking good. And we just want to break out above really 96 level. Uh, in order to uh, this consolidation that we're seeing on the market. So just below 96 here on WTI, then we'll probably get a, a very strong move to the upside and come probably about a $2 move up to the 200 MA uh, for about 90, up to about 98 level, 98.75. So that's definitely going to be one of our top picks at the moment. WTI, if we get a breakout, weekly looks great for a breakout and the daily looks good for a consolidation to a breakout. So, um, yeah, definitely that's going to be one of our top picks as well. And then uh, we want to take a look at copper. So copper broke out yesterday as well, broke out above 3.1885. So we're looking, this is the sort of move we're looking for on WTI to occur now, a, uh, a similar breakout. So we've had this consolidation on copper throughout the last week or so. And we finally broke out to the upside. And now we seem to be just heading to 3.2773. Uh, we're just consolidating a little bit, but it's on its way there. And, uh, yeah, nice break on copper because it's been really good to us this week. A lot of good opportunities on the sell side and the support side. The other thing to note here is if copper is going to pull the other metals out of the downtrend, copper does tend to be one of the leading metals here. So if, uh, if copper has a continuation, we may get a bit of a delayed reaction here. So it might not be till later in the day or next week we see gold and silver start to uh, carve a bit of a bottom. But we are um, on the lookout for that too. So oil, the fact that oil and copper are rallying at the moment, could pull, pull um, the commodities, gold, silver, out of this downtrend at the moment, moving into seasonality for November as well. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on that as well, because if oil and copper break out to the upside, they will naturally pull gold and silver with, with them too. So keep a lookout for that and just be in more day trade. Don't try and keep on to, I wouldn't say try and do swing trades at the moment um, with uh, shorting the metals right now. I would uh, be looking more for the short-term opportunities to sell short. Uh, currently, and then finally, uh, we want to take a look at natural gas. So natural gas, um, again, natural gas has been really good to us this week. Had a nice, wood, nice, uh, this upward trending channel. Uh, we broke through key Fibonacci. We spiked up here on the natural gas inventories yesterday. You can see this is our uh, trade position we were in actually at its peak here at 3.694. We hit a 10 to 1 on our trade. We're still in the position, so. Um, we're not going to update until next week on that, on our second position there. We're still, um, we're just uh, bouncing around this um, 3.694 Fibonacci level. So we see how that reacts today, but we've had a really nice run here on natural gas. Again, uh, with the energies, if I just show you this uh, on my vertical charts, you can see everything is starting to break out. So you've got the middle there, the Brent oil. Um, we've got WTI oil to the right and natural gas here on the left. So everything is starting to confluence and to the upside. So I'm waiting for WTI, the U.S. oil, to break out next. So that's the next pick. And um, we'll see. I mean, natural gas has kind of hit its profit target now. And there's probably about another $1, one dollar or 100 pip move left in Brent oil at the moment before we see a retracement. So we'll keep an eye on those. Uh, and so with, uh, with that, guys, that's pretty much it for... Um, the analysis of the markets, there's a lot to be looking at today. Um, we're, we're just getting started really for the day here. We've got um, a lot of potential opportunities just to ride these moves for the rest of the day. So with that, let's have a look at what key news we have coming out today as well. So moving into uh, into next week. So we don't have a lot of key news coming out today. So this could be a good opportunity just to have continuations of the moves which are already playing out until we get uh, more news which is going to affect the US dollar next week. Um, so we have on Monday, the 25th of November, US pending home sales. That is at 3 p.m. GMT, 11 a.m. Eastern time. The US pending home sales, that's the National Association of Realtors pending home sale report measuring the change in the number of homes under contract to be sold but still awaiting the closing transaction. So 
That excludes um, new construction. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar. A lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the U.S. dollar. And that's important because the U.S. dollar is inversely correlated to the gold price, of course. Uh, next Tuesday at 3 p.m. GMT, 11 a.m. Eastern time, we have the U.S. Consumer Confidence. Now, that report measures the level of consumer confidence in economic activity. It is a leading indicator as it can predict consumer spending, which plays a major role in overall economic activity. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar. A lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the U.S. dollar. Uh, so that's a 3 p.m. GMT, 11 a.m. Eastern time next Tuesday. Next Wednesday at 1.30 GMT, 9.30 Eastern time, we have U.S. core durable goods orders. That report measures the change in the total value of new orders for long-lasting manufacturing goods, excluding transportation items. So a high reading indicates increased manufacturing activity. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the U.S. dollar. Then we have, uh, moving into next week, Wednesday, we have Michigan Consumer Sentiment. That index rates the relative level of current and future economic conditions. Uh, so there are two versions of this data released two weeks apart. So the preliminary data tends to have a greater impact, and the reading is compiled from a survey of around 500 consumers. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar. Lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Wednesday at 2.55 GMT, 10.55 Eastern time. And of course, for those of you who also uh, trade the energies, there's plenty of opportunities during in- inventory. So um, Wednesday at next Wednesday, 27th of November at 3.30 p.m. GMT, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, we have U.S. crude oil inventories. That data reports the number of barrels of crude oil commercial firms have in inventory. So commercial firms report their inventory levels to the Energy Information Administration on a weekly basis. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for crude oil. A lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. And then next Wednesday, the 27th of November, we have the U.S. natural gas storage. And the Energy Information Administration uh, reports their gas storage report measuring the change in the number of cubic feet of natural gas held in underground storage during the past week. So while this is a U.S. indicator, it tends to have a greater impact on the USD CAD too due to Canada's sizable energy sector, and that's, of course, important because the CAD is correlated to oil price too. So those are the major announcements we need to be keeping an eye on for our commodity trading over the next week. And, of course, if you would like to take your trading to the next level, you can find out uh, more about our, uh, our December um, training workshops that we're going to be doing and the live trading program too so you can find out about our gold silver club masterclass and our live trading room packages you can uh, find out more about that at the following um, so you can go to our website just join the gold and silver club.com and you can request more information on that we've got um, some special packages available for our last two trainings of the year in december so you can contact us on our london number 0207 193 or a New York office, uh, plus one six four six eight two eight zero four zero three, or a Johannesburg office at plus two seven one one zero eight three eight four zero three, or of course email us at office at the golden silver club dot com. And do make sure you take advantage of our newsletter as well. Uh, subscribe to that, you get free weekly gold, silver, oil, commodity currency news, live market analysis, and prices. So any questions at all, do get in touch with us uh, on the number on the screen there, guys. Okay. Perfect. So um, I think that's pretty much a wrap for today, guys. Uh, of course, uh, big thanks to the, uh, the team at FX, FX Street, everybody at uh, FX Street. And uh, we'll catch you. Uh, Ray, uh, just where are we based on that? Ray, if you just drop us an email, office at the Golden Silver Club, we'll send you details of our locations for our workshops and our, where we're based. Fantastic. Okay, great stuff. Uh, cheers, guys. We'll definitely we'll catch you back here same time uh, next week. Uh, Good luck for today's training for next week. Lots to be keeping an eye on. So take care, guys. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Bye-bye.